Hello and welcome! I'm DDF Racer, and today I'm going to be unboxing and having a look at my brand new Sony ZV-1 camera. ZV-1? ZV-1? This is an upgrade I've been thinking about for a long time now, although recently it's become more of a necessity than anything else. For those of you who might not be familiar with my channel then, hello! I'm a sim racer. I drive virtual cars at virtual circuits in a virtual reality headset, usually whilst talking a lot of nonsense at the same time. That's my thing, and for pretty much every video I've ever made on the channel, whether it's been a little picture-in-picture -picture in the bottom left corner when I go racing, or a full shot for when I'm doing a review or an unboxing, like now, I've always used the Logitech C920. Don't get me wrong though, this webcam's been fine perfectly fine. The picture quality is more than enough for what I've done on the channel so far, and it is actually really easy to use. More recently though, it's become a bit of a problem with it randomly disconnecting in the middle of my live streams and sometimes just disappearing from the device list completely. I mean, I'm on borrowed time as it is already with this thing, so I should probably get on with the video before it decides to cut out again. To say it's frustrating is a little bit of an understatement, because when you're doing live video, you just need to know that everything's gonna work. Fixing stuff live on stream with an audience waiting, it's it's just not a good look. Now I do realise that I could have just gone and purchased another Logitech webcam exactly the same, plugged it straight in, and nobody would know the difference. But to be honest, the software is not great at the moment, especially in conjunction with my steering wheel, which is also a Logitech. So I figured this would be the perfect opportunity to finally get around to this upgrade that I've been, I've been wanting to do. I've always wanted to bump up the image quality a little bit, you know, just take my productions to the next level and also being able to get out of this seat and record from different positions in the room or maybe even record outside the room, like real life track days, that kind of thing. It's always something I've wanted to do. And the thing with webcams as well is you're only going to get so much image quality out of those things and you have to have them connected to your computer as well. I mean, I know I could just go out and record on my phone, but to take that next step, to have that control over the image and just to be able to get that extra level of detail, you really do need to start looking at uh, a camera. So why specifically this camera then, the Sony ZV-1? Why did I get this? Well. First and foremost, I didn't want to spend a lot of money. Recently, I've splashed out a fair amount on a replacement graphics card because my old 1080 was about to die. I'll put a link on top of the screen to my video about that if you guys are interested. And also, I've gone and got myself a pre-order of the new Fanatec CSL Direct Drive wheelbase as well, so yeah. But at the same time, I didn't really want to compromise too much on the image quality and the features available, so yeah, this thing ticks all the boxes. A lot of the marketing, it, it says it's been specifically designed for vlogging in mind. Now, I know that I don't really do much vlogging on the channel, but I do like to do pieces to camera, you know, where I talk about um, new, new things I've got on the rig, or maybe tutorial videos that are going to be coming up on the channel very shortly, or maybe just an opinion piece to camera, the intros in my videos. You know, I'm always, I'm always taking the opportunities that I can to actually talk to the camera and try and get my personality across on the channel as opposed to just you know I'm a guy who does racing you know it's kind of I kind of like sharing those experiences with you and I know that you guys like sharing those experiences with me as well so getting my personality getting my face across is, is in as good quality as possible on the video it really does make a difference you know if it's in 360 potato mode with terrible audio no one's gonna like that now I know that some webcams can do 1080 but only 30 frames a second, but most would have to bump it down to 720 if you want to get those 60 frames. This thing, no problems whatsoever. I mean, I can even go up to 4K. <laughs> I can do slow-mo. There's so many different things I can do with this. I'm going to have to find some uses for them on the channel, of course, but it can do it if I want to. It's nice and lightweight. It has fantastic built-in audio, apparently. It's got background defocus. It's got amazing face tracking. And it's got something called product review mode as well. So, for example, if I put this up to the camera now, it goes all blurry with the Sony ZV-1, apparently. I can do that. I can, like, show you a new pedal. I can show you a new steering wheel. I can show you, I don't know, a button box. I can put that up to the camera and you guys will see it in detail. I'd have to play around with the focus settings. And looking at the reviews as well, it also has, apparently, great colors out of the box that like you'd have to do much color grading to it the color profiles are really nice and natural looking on it also as well it comes with usb streaming mode now i do have a hdmi capture device and hdmi to micro hdmi cable on the way they're not with me today so i will be using the usb built-in streaming mode so i can effectively just plug this thing in 
and it works like a normal webcam. But yeah, for those higher quality shots where I'm going to be doing a pre-recorded piece to the camera, just disconnect it, record it on the camera itself with the touchscreen that flips around, and yeah, 1080p, 60 frames a second, nice crisp quality, blurry background, what more could you want from a a video camera. Now of course a little disclaimer, I am an absolute noob when it comes to these things. I'm not a photographer, I'm not a, a video guy, I plug a webcam in, I capture game footage and I press record and that's pretty much the extent of my technical knowledge. I, I know a few settings and streaming and encoding settings but as far as apertures and shutter speeds and exposures and ISOs and... <sighs> I'm going to be reading a lot of tutorials over the next few months, let me put it that way. And some of you might be thinking, isn't this overkill? Well, yeah, it is a little bit, I'm not going to lie. Um, this is massive overkill for what I've been doing on the channel so far. You guys see my face for 5 or 10 seconds at the start of the video, and I might you know, pop back up throughout the rest of the video in full screen. But apart from that, I'm just in this little square in the bottom left corner of the screen, and w why do I need a video camera for that? Well, that's a very good point, but I can't do things on the webcam. Like I said before, I can't pick up the webcam and film outside at a track day. I can't do slow-mo, high-def gear shots of, like, pedals or the CSL DD that's going to be arriving in September. And I'm not sure if you can tell, but yeah, the quality on the webcam, it's... It's passable. It's not bad. But it just... It could look a whole lot better. So... With all that out of the way, it's probably time I started opening some of these boxes. Now, it's not a straightforward affair, because obviously I've got the Sony ZV-1 here, but I also have a, well, it's a selfie stick slash tripod that extends up to 1.4 meters, so I can use it as a tripod behind the screen, or I can take it with me when I'm filming outside and get some nice stable shots. And of course, if I'm taking it outside, I need spare batteries and a battery charger, not to mention a couple of memory cards to save all those videos and pictures on. And I have a clamp mount as well that I can fit to a microphone stand or the screen that I've got in the room here. So for you guys watching on the webcam and the live streams, it stays in the fixed position. Now there's a few other things that are not in that empty box. What's going on guys? Which I'm still waiting on Amazon to drop off. Those things include the HDMI capture device for the PC, the HDMI to micro HDMI cable, which will let me connect it instead of using USB mode. Now apparently the USB mode on the Sony ZV-1 only goes up to 720. Uh, at 30 frames a second, whereas when you connect it to a HDMI capture device, you can go all the way up to 1080 at 60 frames a second, and that's pretty much as high as I'll be recording on the computer, so it will basically get past the need of me transferring files across all the time. I can just record direct using the capture device. And also another thing that I purchased is a dummy battery and a wide-angle lens. Now the wide-angle lens is because I've read in a lot of the reviews the Sony ZV-1 has well, I mean, it's got great image stabilization, but when you turn that on, it crops the picture down quite a lot. It hasn't got the widest field of view to begin with, so when you're at arm's length, apparently, and I'm probably going to find this out very shortly, it does get rid of a lot of the background. It's quite a tight shot. But the dummy battery is a very important one. The dummy battery will let me run the camera for several hours at a time. At the moment, continuous operation apparently you can only get about an hour out of these things before you have to swap the batteries over and if i'm in the middle of a 90 minute race the webcam dies and i need to swap the battery that it's not a quick job <laughs> and it's gonna have to wait until the pit stop that's basically what i'm doing now with the webcam cutting out i may have to reset it so that kind of defeats the purpose okay so first things first sony zv1 first thing that strikes me is it is incredibly light it doesn't weigh anything really it's really small considering the things that this camera can do it's tiny <laughs> i should have got a pair of scissors be right back there we go that's that's a lot easier okay so first things first it's an advert for the forum that's a reference guide but only in indonesian english startup guide english reference guide save these and the first disclaimer, camera body and battery may get warm with use. This is normal. This camera's in Australia, so it's going to get very warm, probably. <laughs> and let's have a look inside the box then, shall we? I don't know if you guys can see that there. We have the USB cable. Oh, that's, that's the fluffy mic protector that goes on the top there. And then let's carefully take the rest of this out, shall we? There's our battery. Absolutely tiny thing. Tiny battery. And then the camera itself. Wow, that is so light. 
that weighs absolutely nothing. And da -da -da -da, there it is. Wow, look at the size of that thing. Fits really nicely in the hand. This is the startup guide. And the first thing that it says is basically go and look online for the manual. <laughs> Install the battery. Let's open cargo bay doors, Hal. In it goes. And then pop the memory card in. Just a quick FYI, these cameras do not come with a memory card, so you have to buy your own. The uh, memory cards that I've got, by the way, are SanDisk 128 gigabytes. A lot of the people on the review said you need a card with a particularly good read-write speed. And from the research that I did, uh, this can read up to 170 and write 90 a second. So that's, for the money, that's pretty much as good as I could find. Ah, these things are actually quite hard to get into. They vacuum packed it right to the edge of the card. These scissors are quite wide. This probably isn't the best tool for the job. Could do like a Stanley knife or something. Sim Racer gets defeated by a piece of plastic. There we go. He's in. Memory card goes in the adapter. That goes into the camera. All right, then, well, let's switch this thing on and see what it's all about. Oh. There's no charge in the battery. <laughs> One of the cool features that I saw in a lot of the reviews is, yeah, there's a power button on the top, but it actually just opens by flipping out the screen. So here we go. It's pretty cool. English language at a date and time. Oh, that's fancy. Asking for my time zone. And I'm offended already by Sony because it's got Melbourne and Sydney, but it doesn't have Brisbane. We do exist here in Brisbane, Sony. Now, nah, any mess and nobody comes to Brisbane anyway, what mine about? <laughs> and the current time is 8.30 p.m. It's 2021, and it is the 26th of July. And that's it, enter. Uh, preparing image database file, please wait. And we're in. Okay, so the camera is currently cycling through the automatic picture mode settings. Depending on what I point at, it's currently in nighttime mode, and if I point it over here, goes into portrait mode because it's automatically detected my face on the monitor over there. Let's select movie because I'm going to be using this predominantly for movies. I might use it occasionally for pictures for like thumbnails and stuff. Okay, so now that I'm in movie mode, let's flip this thing around. How cool is that? And yeah, let's start recording basically. So I've got the webcam here at the moment and I'm going to put the uh, I'm going to put the um, Sony ZV-1 up on the screen next to it so you guys can see the image quality. Now this is 100% straight out of the box. This has had absolutely no processing done to it. This has had absolutely no filters put on. I haven't changed any settings apart from the um, aperture priority that you guys have just seen. And yeah, wow. Okay. That's looks pretty good on the tiny screen already. And obviously you guys can see the background, the... Um, the signs and the steering wheels and everything, I'm getting really confused where to look now. Is it in the webcam? Is it on, on the ZV-1? I don't... ZV-1. At arm's length with image stabilization, you're getting all these different angles in the background. You can see my council bills there as well. You guys don't want to see that. Let's put it this way. Actually, I've just noticed something that was recording at 50 frames a second in full HD, which is going to absolutely drain the battery and the memory card. I don't want to do that. For what I'm using for you guys, 1080 at 60 frames is fine. So I need to change that from 50 to 60. So let me just let me just play with the settings a little bit. Let me let me load up the manual. Watch it. <laughs> read the manual. Everybody says it, read the manual. I should go and read the manual. Okay, so apparently I need to change it over from PAL to NTSC, so let's do that. There we go, all sorted. Okay, let's try that again. This is a comparable shot, I would say. The Sony ZV-1 is just below where my webcam normally is, and the angle that you guys are getting right now is the angle that the webcam would get as well. So if I just switch between these two, you can see that with image stabilization switched on, the shot is quite a bit narrower, if I'm being honest with you. It is cropped in quite a bit. Now, obviously, it, I've got the benefit of having a nice stable picture right now. If I start moving the camera around to start shaking a bit, it's not going to be super jerky. Now, I will turn off image stabilization and show you that in a minute. I can kind of see what people mean now by looking at the preview screen here. It's, it's quite cropped in. But yeah, it doesn't look bad, to be honest with you. I'm really happy with this. It's really light. Uh, the image quality looks fantastic on this little micro screen, at least anyway. The tree test will be when I load it into the computer and give it a go and put it in Vegas and start editing it and playing around with it and seeing the quality of it as well and also seeing what the audio is going to be like because I can see that I'm using the audio at the moment now I'm 
using my headset here, I'm going to switch to that now so you guys can hear what it sounds like when I put the audio through the headset. But then I'm going to switch to the onboard cameras here. Now, I haven't got the... I believe it's called the Dead Cat. I haven't got that fitted at the moment because it's not windy. I haven't got any need for any noise blocking because there's no wind noise. It's indoors. I haven't got the ceiling fan or the aircon on at least anyway, but it'll be interesting to see how the onboard audio here compares to switch it over again now it's on the headset be interesting to see how this compares on the headset and see what the quality is like it might be a little bit echoey like i said i don't know this is literally the first recording i've ever done on this camera i've got no idea what this thing's going to sound like i've got no idea what this thing's going to look like but i'm very excited to find out and like i said one of the good things about having this camera is it now gives me the freedom to move around you can see my rig in the background with the steering wheel and all that kind of nonsense happening all my pedals my hotas my big glass of water which is now empty I don't think I'd ever use this angle practically. I don't think I've got any use for this because the lighting looks terrible because all my lighting's coming from over that way. But yeah, you guys get the idea that I can now, I I'm mobile. Now something I've wanted to try on this camera since reading the reviews is the background defocus feature. So let's give that a quick go now. So this button here, it's currently focused in the background. So keep an eye on that behind me. Press defocus and it should make it a bit more cinematic and a bit more focused on my face. It should sort of bring me sharper into the image as opposed to my shoe on the shelf in the background, which I get so many questions about. So yeah, first hands-on impression is really good. I like this thing. It looks fantastic. It feels fantastic. Hopefully it looks fantastic for you guys as well. But this is an unboxing video. Let's get some more unboxing done. Let's have a look down here and, and see what else, see what the goodies I've got. But what all of this unboxing now means is I get to use one of the features on the Sony ZV-1 I've been really looking forward to actually. Product showcase. When you hold things up to the camera, it tracks to the nearest object as opposed to tracking to your face and your eyes. And it's really handy for when you want to show things off. So, for example, the memory cards from SanDisk I mentioned earlier, they were 128 gig. But if I want to show you these now, hold them straight to the camera and look at that, straight in focus. Move it away, back on my face. Move it here, back on there. I wanted to show you earlier about the uh, the dead cat that goes over the top of the microphone, basically the wind muffler. So uh, before my Logitech C920 webcam, it was just a blurry mess. Hello Logitech, by the way, I'm still here. But this, hold it up to the camera and, oh, it's making a liar out of me. Come on, where are you? Dead cat. It's not, there it is. Why is it struggling focusing with that? Let's try something else. Let's try the micro USB that comes with it. Yep. There we go. Straight into focus as well. Let's try the battery. Yeah, the battery works as well. That worked flawlessly. Let me try the dead cat again. No, nope. Sony. I think I'm onto something here. But what else is in this box basically is, like I said before, the small rig clamp mount. So that'll be going on the screen very shortly. And also the tripod. So you can see here, this is the extendable tripod slash selfie stick that I've got with the myriad of features available. But the one I'm interested in is this one on the bottom here live broadcast. I want to try this tripod. I want to get this set up. So back in a moment. So for the time being, I'm going to go back to my old faithful Logitech C920 webcam, which surprisingly hasn't died on me yet. This has been recording for over an hour now. It's the most I've had out of it for weeks. You watch as soon as I go live later in the week, as soon as I start streaming, if I was to use this Logitech, it would die on me. But this is the tripod slash selfie stick. A bit more of a permanent solution than just mounting the webcam on top of the screen. This thing comes with a remote as well. Now, I don't think this will be useful for the camera. I think it's more of a, a yeah, it's more of a, a Bluetooth thing. Now, see, I'm already missing the product showcase feature. It allows you to connect to your camera via Bluetooth, control the trigger that way. You don't have to press the camera, put it on delay and do that. So, I mean, it could work with the Sony. I don't know. I. I haven't read those features, but let's have a look at this thing, shall we? It's not really a selfie stick per se, because you kind of have to hold on to the product's legs like that. Um, it's not terrible. The base goes out quite wide as well, so that can support a decent bit of weight when it's all loaded up. Quarter inch mount on the top, that'll go straight onto the bottom of the Sony. Let's just open up these clips and see how far this goes. Oh wow, okay, that is quite a bit of range on that already. Does that go any more? Oh, there we go. There's an extra one at the end. I'd say that's 1.4 meters. That will do the job nicely. Yeah, that's more than good enough. That will go over the top excellently there. Cool. Okay, well, let's do that then, shall we? Because, yeah, my arm's getting tired. 
Okay, so the first thing I've noticed with this is that the tripod stand is actually notched on the top, so I, I can either set it here or I can set it here. There's no kind of in-between, there's no kind of uh, fine control, it's either this or that. And that doesn't really work because were this webcam, sorry, where this camera needs to go, I keep on saying webcam because I'm still thinking of my Logitech C920, but as far as this camera goes, it needs it needs to have that angle dialed in. Might have to use the clamp mount instead and then save the tripod for more level angles. It's not, it's not as adjustable as I thought, so that's a negative on this tripod so far. If I just have a play around with this, if I move this, it kind of locks back into position again. Sorry guys, you got a face full of DDF right now. Nobody really needs to see that. Oh, actually that's not too bad. Maybe I've not screwed it in tightly. Maybe that's going to drop over time. But something to bear in mind is I do still have active image stabilization enabled. If I turn that off, it's going to get a much bigger frame. So let's try that. I'm not going to move the tripod. I'm just going to keep the camera in exactly the same spot. I'm just going to turn off image stabilization and see how much more picture that gives us. Okay, so this is with image stabilization off. That looks like a massive difference, actually. You can actually see my C920 is in the corner of the screen. I don't want to move that yet in case I have to do any reference shots at the end. That's quite a big improvement. <laughs> you can see a lot more to the side. You can see a lot of the junk in the background. Um, you've also got a much lower angle. You can actually see a bit of my leg as well. And um, no, that's actually pretty good. So in terms of recording with the webcam, I don't need Im image stabilization because I'm not taking the camera anywhere. I'm not moving around. When the wide angle lens from Ulanzi gets here as well, it's going to be even wider, so I could potentially get a little bit closer and you could see more of the rig. You know, you can start to see the shifter a bit more. You can see a bit more of the wheel. You can kind of get a few more details in when I start putting things on the wall instead of just shoes and bins and things. <laughs> So on with the unboxing and let's see what else we've got in here. There's not much left to go now, really. But um, the one that could be quite useful and could, you know, fix these problems with the stand if I have any problems getting it lined up again is this. This is the clamp mount. Uh, super clamp mount with one quarter inch screw, which is what the Sony ZV-1 goes on to. And it's got a ball head mount, so it's apparently quite flexible. And all of this was pretty cheap as well, guys. This was like $15 off Amazon or something. The tripod was like $20. The spare batteries were like $20. Um, the whole thing was done on a really tight budget. I mean, it's not cheap by any means. It's not like it's it's not the same price as a Logitech C920 webcam, of course. But then the features in this thing are great. So it's, I haven't unlocked half the potential, not even 1% of the potential. Once I start learning how to use you, little Sony ZV-1, get the video settings dialed in, get, you know, start using it for photos, it's... I can't wait. I'm really excited. But this is the mount. This will clamp on to pretty much anything by the looks of it. So it goes quite wide. So I did see people using it as a table mount. So you can do that and it'll clamp onto a microphone stand as well and then that tightens up again. I'd say that's probably going to be a better solution as opposed to putting it on the selfie stick uh, tripod that's going to get in the way of maybe the oculus sensors and also my keyboard because if I move my keyboard stand on the rig whoa yeah that's not going to go well I should probably stick it on the mount. But in terms of how far unboxings go that's pretty much it to be honest guys there's not much left to unbox like i said i've still got the hdmi uh to usb capture device on the way i've still got the hdmi to micro hdmi cable i've got the ulanzi wide angle lens as well but to be honest this without image stabilization on the selfie stick so it's got a little bit more distance is actually a really wide angle by it is obviously i've got the lights behind me in the background so that's um not great for the lighting but if i turn this around like that but you can see the quality improves massively. I might go and take some artsy shots and mix them into the end of the video now. I might go and take some photos and just crop that into the end. But as far as this video goes, there's not really much more for me to look at. Camera looks great, camera feels great. I'm really looking forward to getting used to this over the next few weeks. If you guys have got any advice, any tips, any help, leave them in the comments down below. Let me know. We'll be interested to see how the battery goes on this thing because it's not dropped any bars yet. But if I'm streaming for like an hour, two hours, three hours, which I will be doing this week, some of the races, I think the Wednesday race, the GT4s at Lauter Drink are going to be 90 minutes, then that's going to be a good test on the battery. I don't want it to die halfway through that. 
Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching. If you did enjoy the video, don't forget to leave it a thumbs up. And if you want to see me put this into action, then subscribe and press that notification bell because then you can see it in my webcam, you can see all my pieces to the camera and all the other exciting plans that I've got for videos, taking it out into the real world and doing random shots and probably get, getting a bit artsy because I've wanted to do that for a while. I've always been limited by the technology that I've had. Now I don't have those limitations. So looking forward to doing some more exciting and interesting stuff on the channel. But anyway guys, rambling, I'm gonna wrap the video up. Look after yourselves. Bye-bye. <laughs>